Hello everyone. I bet you thought I was dead, or I just bailed after reaching a thousand subs. But fear not, it is not the case, for I have just been very lazy when it comes to videos. I've been drawing in the meantime, like not a lot a lot, but sometimes, and I think I could have done more, but at least I did some stuff. And that's what I want to talk about, the things that I've been drawing. Studies to be exact, because I feel that a lot of people, they approach drawing studies and studying some kind of subject or other kinds of art in the wrong way. So I just want to go over a few things that I keep in the back of my mind to help me draw studies much, much better and also be much more satisfied with the outcome. The first thing that I'd like to tackle, which I know a lot of people are getting quite wrong, is that a study needs to be a one-to-one -one copy of whatever you are studying. And I'm not saying that if it is a one-to-one -one copy, then it was a bad study. However, you don't need to push yourself to make a one-to-one -one copy. You can change things up. You can change the colors or some shapes, maybe change the lighting. It's all up to you. Because when you're studying something, you're learning the foundational shapes and how they read in a certain kind of angle of an object. If you make the object red, but it is actually blue, nobody's gonna care. And as you venture along in your art journey and you begin to stylize your art in a way that you like, then you can also stylize your studies, turn them into their own little art pieces. Now, the second thing I'd like to talk about is all the people that are saying, but I want to make comics, I want to draw anime. Why should I study stuff from real life? It's very simple, every kind of art style Every kind of comic or anime or whatever is derived from reality. An art style is basically playing the game of drawing something with a new rule set. But the basic rules, the foundation of drawing that applies in reality also applies in stylized art or at least in 99% of it. So yes, studying stuff from reality like poses, life drawing or just objects, making studies of random objects that lie around your house or desk or whatever can help you draw stylized anime or whatever you want to draw. Now the third thing is master studies. If you don't know what that is, it's basically a study of an object, but the object is always a painting from an old master painter. Or I don't know, from a not so old master painter, I don't care. The gist of it is it's a study of a painting made by somebody who knows how to paint and the effectiveness of these master studies. You're not making a master study in order to copy the art style of the painter that painted the original. When doing a master study, your approach to studying this kind of subject is going to be quite different than from a normal real life object. With that, I mean that in a master study, you will most likely look at how this master of painting has simplified shapes into one big shape group or simplified the lighting or stylized his own lighting to accentuate some kind of form he wanted to push. You can think of it as this. In a normal study from real life, you look for how something looks in real life. How do you paint it? How is it structured? How does it look? In a master study, you will look for things that are not like real life. For instance, a specific part of the painting is highly detailed and another part has absolutely no detail. Only when you look at it from afar, you see everything like normal. If you go closer, then you see all the broad brush strokes and it's just confusing. And the thing is, this painter wanted it to be so confusing from up close. And in one of these master studies, you're not just going to copy one of these brush strokes and then you're done with it. You're going to ask yourself, why did he choose to have such a broad and confusing brush stroke that doesn't detail anything right next to an area where there's like high details and whatever. Just like when you do a normal study and you should observe the object of your studies before you draw for a while, you should have quite long gaps in between drawing when doing master studies. And with that, I don't mean you should have a 45 minute gap between your brush strokes so you can watch the next episode of Supernatural. But I mean that you should have like five to 10 seconds 
before you do your next brush stroke to really get what you are actually painting. Don't get trapped in this weird autopilot mode where you do so many brush strokes or strokes when you sketch that are completely irrelevant. It's always better to make one confident good stroke than making 10 unconfident chicken scratchy whatever kind of strokes so one of them turns out well. And now the last thing that I'd like to address is putting theory to the craft while studying. When you draw from a reference aka you are making a study be it some kind of figure drawing, a portrait or a car, it doesn't matter. You should always take a step back every now and then and think about the theoretical aspect of your drawing. As an example, if you make a study of a portrait, let's take the Mona Lisa and you're sketching in the features of her face. After you're done with the initial sketch, it would be a very wise choice to take a step back, look at your sketch, maybe flip the canvas if you draw digitally, and oftentimes measure out how far apart are the eyes, where are the eye sockets in terms of placement on the head. You can measure it in the original and then in your drawing. That way you can see how far were you off. Does it look better in the original or do you think is it better in your sketch? And most of all, if something doesn't align with the theory that you have learned or that you know about, you should always ask yourself why is that? Even if the reason behind that boils down to something like the artist just had no knowledge of anatomy and winged it, which can very well happen. There are a lot of big and really famous paintings that don't have the best anatomy. Well, sometimes they have like no anatomy. Something is completely wrong. However, if it was intentionally wrong, that's a completely different aspect. I mean, we can't say for sure if it is intentional because it's not like we can just go back in time and ask them, at least not yet we can't, but for the sake of calling them masters and with the Mona Lisa, if there's anything like wrong with the anatomy of the Mona Lisa and we find that out while making the study, then we're just going to assume it was intentional. The reason behind that intent could be that the reference for the Mona Lisa just had a weird head or Leonardo DiCaprio just didn't have the time to finish the Mona Lisa the right way. Whatever it is you find out along the journey, always ask yourself why. And as a little bonus for all the people that are still watching right now, I'm going to give you a absolutely invaluable pro tip. For some that may be obvious, for others that may be like new grounds they never heard of. Basically everything that I have told you now about studies is, well, it is the right way to study. However, it is something that I would call active learning while, well, learning. And when I say active learning, that implies that there is passive learning, which there is. And you can guess three times which one of these is the faster method to actually learning a skill. Now, I'm not gonna give you the time to guess three times with only two choices. I'm not stupid, but it's the active learning. And this kind of learning, this active learning I'm talking about is one of the greatest differences in people that are learning to draw. Because I am sure you have heard of people that are drawing for years, 10 years into it, 15 years into it. And their skill level is, well, it's not bad, of course. However, if you are drawing for 15 years, then it should be quite good. However, you look at their stuff and at the beginning, it improved just like everyone else. And then it staggered. The improvement just stopped. And most likely they are complaining that, well, they draw every day and they do studies and they do everything that the popular YouTube people say they should do. However, they're not improving. And that is most likely due to the fact that they are only passively learning. They are making studies for the sake of making studies, churning out a big study every day or multiple studies every day, while others finish one study every week and they seem to improve just fine. A lot of people are talking about talent in these cases when it is actually just a learning strategy of active learning, making a conscious effort to understand what you're doing, to understand what others were doing before you and why you are doing what you are doing. Now, if you like this kind of stuff where I talk about something like active learning, which is a very, very handy thing to have. I can make a whole video about that so you know exactly what to do. If you'd like that, 
just let me know in the comments. Because if you say you like active learning and want a video about that, I know you have watched this video until the end and your opinion actually matters to me. And since we're already at the 10 minute mark and my editing skills are subpar at best, I don't want to bore you with another 10 minutes of me talking about active learning right now. So have a great day, make a study, maybe make two, but see to it that you make a study the right way. Happy drawing and until next time.